All right, hello. Um, we're going to go through on our pre-calculus one, one notes, graphs of equations. I'll start out by asking um, you to list and sketch any parent functions that come to mind um, that you've learned in previous math courses. I went ahead and just labeled all the ones that I could think of, um, but I'll go ahead and sketch them with you. So linear is y, equal x, y equals x, and that is a line. These are the parent functions without transformations. Uh, quadratic, we've got y equals x squared. And that is a parabola. When we talk about things like lines or um, parabolas, there are certain things that we always use to graph these. Like with lines, we would use uh, the slope. We might use the y-intercept. We might use the x-intercept. And when we talk about quadratic, um, there isn't a slope for quadratic. We would definitely find the vertex, which is that point in the middle. Um, you're usually asked to find the y-intercept and the x-intercept. Could be more than one. Uh, cubic, we've got... graph that looks like that. And with a cubic, uh, you're usually asked to find the y-intercept, the x-intercept, and um, this point here is kind of like the vertex for quadratic, but it is called a point of inflection. Quartic. Quartic looks a lot like a parabola, but it's just a little bit flatter in the middle, and then it rises up faster. It's a little slower in the middle, it rises up faster. It just has a little flatter part to it. Um, that would still be a uh, vertex. It, um, sorry. It would still be considered a maximum or a minimum of a graph. We would find x-intercepts we would find y-intercepts. And in fact, I'm going to stop writing these because we're basically, when we graph these, we're always looking for x and y-intercepts. And then we're always going to look for some sort of um, piece of information that goes with basically that kind of graph. Um, we have been talking about symmetry. And with symmetry, Actually, the, three, the four of these graphs have some sort of symmetry. Uh, the line and the cubic, those have symmetry that is rotational about the origin. And quadratic has reflection symmetry about the y-axis. Same with quartic. It reflects in the y-axis. So that's something that you also want to keep in mind while we go through these. Um, the reason why I want to talk about symmetry and talk about all these graphs and how you would graph them and what information you'd need is in your assignment, there are a few questions that say to graph using symmetry. And when I look at my line, if I were to graph the y equals x line, I could probably use symmetry to graph that. I could probably use that um, x, y becomes negative x, negative y. That symmetry, that this is the 180 degrees rotation rule from geometry. But any other line, if I had a line that was not y equals x, if I had a line that maybe was not, did not have symmetry about the x-axis anymore, I really could not use symmetry to graph it. So with lines, if there's no symmetry, I would just use my slope and my x-intercept and my y-intercept to graph it. With quadratic, we have symmetry on every single parabola, even if it's moved over. We've got that axis of symmetry down the middle. So if you can find some points on one side of that quadratic, instead of plugging in numbers and finding the points on the other side, we can just reflect those. So this is a time saver. So in your assignment, it's going to ask you to graph some graphs using symmetry, but not every single graph can be graphed with symmetry. 
if it cannot be graphed with symmetry, we want to go and find useful information to graph those graphs. So back to my graphs. Absolute value we know is a V-shape. And the absolute value also has a vertex. And absolute value kind of has slope, just um, two different slopes, one on, the, one on each side. One is positive and one is um, negative. We could also have y-intercept. We could also have x-intercepts. Exponential, this one should be um, very familiar to you as over the past year, there's been a lot in the news regarding exponential figures. Uh, logarithmic is the inverse of exponential. So exponential and logarithmic, um, we get these points by switching the x and the y. And that's what inverse functions do, or inverse equations. You switch the x and the y. Um, also, there really isn't any special information about these other than x-intercept, y-intercept. However, these have asymptotes. Oops, and that is not the asymptote. <laughs> it is here. Sorry about that. Asymptote. And that's that line that the graph is approaching, but it never really ever reaches that uh, line. All right, square root. Parent function starts at zero. And it just has this one branch. It does not go in both directions. That one does not have any symmetry. Reciprocal or rational? Um, so I'm just going to really talk about the reciprocal. We will get into rational functions later. But just talking about the reciprocal function, 1 over x, it has two asymptotes. And it has two branches. And in the case of the parent function, there is no x or y intercept. But if we transformed it anywhere, if we translated it, there would definitely be some x or y intercepts. Um, the graph itself has symmetry about the origin. Uh, trigonometry, maybe perhaps a lot of you didn't get very far into trigonometry last year. This is the y equals sine x graph, which you saw in our Desmos activity a bunch. Uh, that was not the greatest <laughs> attempt at graphing. Um, but this one does have uh, 180 degree rotational symmetry as well. You should be somewhat familiar with a circle. And then the equation of the circle, um, this one does have symmetry in the x-axis, the y-axis, and rotational symmetry. Uh, but it is not a function. And then x equals y squared, it is also quadratic. It's just the x and the y's are switched, so it's not a function. It just opens to the side instead of up and down. But that one does have symmetry. Um, about the x-axis. So on this second page, what information is important for graphing equations efficiently and accurately by hand? So I would say for every single graph, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, and then one more thing I didn't really quite talk about. I'm going to pull my graphs back over here and talk about for a second. We'll look at the front row. Um, end behavior. So all the odd powered polynomial functions have the same end behavior. Linear starts low, goes high, unless we have a transformation that reflects it. But just talking about the parent function, it is increasing the entire time. However, quadratic decreases and then starts increasing again. Cubic is increasing the entire time. It does go from concave down to concave up, right there at the point of inflection, but it's still increasing the whole time. And then cortic, it is decreasing and then starts increasing again. 
So what is happening at the very ends, that is called the end behavior. And that's always important when we, when we graph graphs. Um, last year, you should have learned that all odd functions, all odd uh, polynomials, have the same end behavior where we start um, as negative, negative infinity in the y's and go to positive infinity in the y's. So it's always increasing unless there is a reflection. So again, I'm talking about parent functions. And then all evens, they decrease and then increase at the end. So they're both facing the same direction. These are facing opposite directions. So end behavior is super important for most graphs as well. And then some other things that are important but does not pertain to every single graph could be slope, um, ver vertices, I'll just put vertex, um, max or min values, and asymptotes. So, and there might be more. These are things that pertain to uh, specific kinds of graphs. And then which equations have symmetry? What type of symmetry? I kind of went over that as I was drawing out the graph. Next, finding the x and y intercepts. <coughs> Excuse me. When we find the x and y intercepts uh, for the x, we are going to make y equals 0 in the equation. For the y intercept, we make x equals 0. Once you get rid of y, you will have the x intercept. Once you get rid of x, we will have the y intercept. I personally always like to um, organize my work so it is clear. And I'll do that in a table where I have my x-intercept here and my y-intercept over here. So for my x-intercept, I'm going to make y zero. And once I make y zero and I look and I see I have a quadratic left to solve, and I have to remember and I have to think back to how do we solve a quadratic. Well, the first thing I always look for is can it be factored? So this one can be factored. So if it can be factored, I'm going to factor it. And then we're going to set each factor, oops, each factor equal to zero. And we're going to solve each factor. So I get x equals 4 and I get x equals 2. And then for the y-intercept, we make x zero. So I'll have y equals 0 squared minus 6 times 0 plus 8. And we get y equals 8. Now, when I talk about intercepts, we need an ordered pair. So 0, 8 is the final y-intercept. Going back to x-intercepts, we have two of them. Now, in reality, does it matter which one comes first? Probably not. But usually what I see is we will put them, if they were on a graph, from left to right. So if I've got one at 2 and another one at 4, I would write the x-intercept at 2 first. Now, since we're typing these answers in Canvas, uh, we want them all to be the same. So I am asking that you always put them in order. So you're going to type them in Canvas as 2, 0, then 4, 0. If you mix up the order, then it will mark it wrong in Canvas. So pay attention to the order. Algebraic testing for symmetry. So we were talking about symmetry and just looking at the picture. There is algebraic testing for symmetry. And <clears throat> it, re it involves taking the equation and replacing the equation with uh, reflected points. So first of all, symmetry with respect to the x-axis. If we want to see if it has symmetry with respect to the x-axis, that means that it is symmetrical in the x-axis, like one of those side parabolas, then we need to take the y and replace the y with negative y. If those two equations are equal, then it does have that symmetry. So my test for the x-axis will be me taking the y and making it negative y. 
and then simplifying that. So negative y squared, if I square a negative, it becomes positive. Now that is identical to the original equation, so check. This one does have symmetry with respect to the x-axis. And the phrase that I'm saying is right here. Symmetry with respect to the x-axis. So the next one we will try is symmetry with respect to the y-axis. So this says now we're going to replace x with negative x. And does it yield an equivalent e expression? So for the y-axis, I'm going to have negative x times y squared plus 10. And I'm going to simplify that. If I have a negative x multiplied by y squared, that's still a negative number. Negative x y squared plus 10. So that does not match the original equation. It does not have symmetry with respect to the y-axis. And then finally, symmetry with respect to the origin. So with respect to the origin, plug in both negative x and negative y, and I'm going to see if that is equivalent to the original equation. So I will have negative x times negative y squared plus 10. So I get negative x times y squared plus 10. So hopefully we can, we, uh, can see that that is not equivalent to the original equation, making this question only have symmetry um, with respect to x-axis. So here's one more, and I'm just going to work through it quickly. So we'll do our x-axis first. So we'll have x over, sorry, y equals x over, let me try that one more time, negative y <laughs> equals x over x squared plus 1. Um, that is not equivalent to the original. So Symmetry with respect to the x-axis doesn't work. Now I'm going to re replace the x. So I'll have y equals negative x over negative x squared plus 1. Well, now I've got some stuff to simplify. So after I simplify, I've got y equals negative x over positive x squared plus 1. That is not equivalent to the original, so no, that does not have symmetry. And the third one... Uh, respect to the origin, we're going to change both x and y. So I'll have negative y equals negative x over negative x squared plus 1. That's going to give me negative y equals negative x over x squared plus 1. Now those aren't equivalent yet. However, I'm allowed to manipulate these equations if I were to multiply both sides of the equation by a negative 1, which is like multiplying by negative 1 over 1. That would change this one into a y, and that would change the, denom or the numerator into x over x squared plus 1, making these equivalent, so these equations are symmetry, or uh, do have symmetry with respect to the origin. These are equivalent. Do you have any questions? Contact me.